सो हेलो एवरी वन आवर टूडे टॉपिक इट्स ऑन मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन इन सब्जेक्ट कंजर्वेटिव डेंटिस्ट्री सो लेट एफ डिस्कस दैम वन बाय वन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज द अर्लीएस्ट इंसिपियंट के रीफ डिटेक्शन इट इज टन बाय वेल द आंसर इफ डाइफोटाई सो डाइफोटाई स्टैंड फॉर डिजिटल फाइबर ऑप्टिक ट्रांसलोमिनेशन इमेजिंग सो इट इज एन एडवांस्ड डायग्नोस्टिक इमेजिंग and a diagnostic tool that is used to detect and visualize the dental caries of traditional we uh, traditionally we use was uh fiber optic trans uh translumination that is f o t i so to overcome the limitation uh we combine the f o t i with the, uh with the, Uh, CCD camera that is a digital charge coupled device now what is the principle of this diphotile so the principle uh, of uh, so th- it works on the principle that the carrier tooth the carrier tooth uh it will absorb more light it will absorb more light than the surrounding healthy tissue so that is why uh, the carious region will appear darker so uh, you can see in this figure uh, this is the source from foti source fiber optic light source from which light is passed this diphotai it use a digital ccd camera to capture the images from all tooth so when the teeth are translumated with the safe white light the area of demineralized enamel uh, scatter light differently so that results in darker region in the capture image so these images they are sent to the uh, computer digital image on the computer that can be seen so in computer system the capture images they are processed so a receptor with photo cells it converts the photon energy into the electrical energy that is transmitted to video processor that converts the electrical signals into color which are displayed on the this monitor so uh, diaphotic it consists of hand piece that is the fiber optic light source uh, one for examining the occlusal surface of teeth and other for inspecting the smooth surface and interproximal areas the system it is connected to computer that captures and stores the resulting digital image for the analysis now what are the advantages of diaphotai so diaphotai it is a non invasive meaning it does not require the removal of tooth structure or use of any ionizing radiation so it is highly sensitive in detecting the early demineralization and dental caries it can detect not only the caries but also the uh, structures like uh, like cracks fracture and secondary caries around the dental restorations uh option c is a pulse oximeter so what is pulse oximeter well this one is the pulse oximeter you have definitely seen this device so it is a medical device that is used to measure the oxygen saturation level in the person blood and monitor their pulse rate now what is the principle of this pulse oximeter that you should know so pulse oximeter it emits a two type of wavelength one is the red wavelength and other is the infrared wavelength so what through a translucent part of body like the fingertip ear lobe so the device contains a light emitting diode that emit two wavelength one is the uh, uh, it emits two types of a wavelength one is the a red and other is the infrared right 
नाउ देर विल बी लाइट एब्जॉर्बन द ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड एंड डी ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड दे विल एब्जॉर्ब लाइट डिफरेंटली द ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड द ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड विल एब्जॉर्ब मोर इंफ्रा रेड लाइट सो इंफ्रा रेड लाइट वुड बी एब्जॉर्ब बाय ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड सो इट विल अलाउ मोर रेड लाइट टू पास थ्रू वाइल द डी ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड इट विल एब्जॉर्ब मोर द रेड लाइट so if it will absorb all the red light means it will allow to pass infrared light so a photo detector on the opposite side of the light source it measures the amount of red and infrared light that passes through the body parts so the pulse oximeter it will calculate the oxygen saturation level by comparing the ratio of absorbed and and the infra by the by comparing the ratio of absorbed red and infrared light to the total amount of light that is emitted apart from that you can see on the pulse oximeter you will see two readings number 1 and number 2 so the first one reading would indicate blood oxygen saturation level and other reading is the heart rate along with that you can see uh, average heart rate along with that you can see a bar Uh, that is heart rate bar graph so the pulse oximeter it calculates the oxygen saturation level by comparing the ratio of absorbed red and infrared light to the total amount of light that is emitted apart from that it will measure the pulse rate by detecting the rhythmic variation in light absorption caused by each uh, heart beat so the result it would be uh, displayed Uh, as a percentage for spo2 and in beats per minute for the pulse rate they are uh, the both they are seen on the screen so uh, pulse oximeter they are small lightweight device uh, so they can be carried out they are non invasive uh, pulse oximeter they are commonly used to monitor individual with the respiratory conditions like like copd asthma and sleep apnea so th- it helps the healthcare to assess the effectiveness of treatment and adjust the oxygen therapy if it is required now during the covid-19 pandemic pulse oximeter they gained a g- greater popularity as they uh, as the people Uh, the individual can monitor their oxygen level at home uh, potentially identifying early signs of their respiratory stress so earliest uh, moving to the question back the earliest incipient caries it is detected by it is detected by the diphotai that's your answer moving let's move to the next question uh, and in advanced mechanical exposure occur when a cavity on the mandibular first primary molar is prepared the exposure it is less than 1 mm so uh, remember the exposure here is less than 1 mm and uh, the mechanical pulp ex- exposure uh, uh, during the cavity preparation the exposure is less than 1 mm and the treatment was performed under the rubber dam what is the treatment that should be performed the answer is a direct pulp capping so direct pulp capping so uh, this figure represents the direct pulp capping so it is performed when the dental pulp it has been exposed due to the dental caries or due to the minor uh, minor mechanical injury as shown as provided in this question but there is no sign of inflammation so the dentist what he will do he will remove the decayed uh, so uh, dentist uh, suppose during preparation of tooth uh, he exposed the pulp so here that is known as a direct pulp capping so if the pulp uh, the pulp should be vital and if the pulp 
and the uh, exposure rate is less than 1 mm in diameter. So a biocompatible material like calcium hydroxide, it is applied directly over the exposed pulp to create a barrier uh, and encourage the pulp to heal. So direct pulp capping, it is successful when the exposure rate is minimal and there is no evidence of infection or any inflammation. Whereas the indirect pulp capping it is performed when the dental pulp is not directly exposed but it is at risk due to, due to the deep caries that is present near the pulp chamber. So the indication for the direct pulp capping remember uh, the pulp should be vital. Direct pulp capping it is most effective when the dental pulp is still vital, meaning it is healthy, not inflamed. It should be uh, the pulp should respond positive to vitality test like cold electric pulp testing. Second uh, indication is there should be small pulp exposure. So it is uh, always suitable for cases when the pulp exposure is minimal, typically less than 1 to 2 mm in diameter. Third is there should be no inflammation. There should be no clinical sign of infections or inflammation in the tooth. So these are the criteria that are essential for the direct pulp capping. So answer here is direct pulp capping. Uh, indirect pulp capping it is a dental procedure when there is deep cavity near the pulp chamber of tooth but the pulp it is not directly exposed uh, pulpotomy with formocrisol and pulpotomy with calcium hydroxide they are also not the options so your answer is direct pulp capping Coming to the next question, third question. So this is the figure uh, where you can see there was uh, during cavity preparation, there were uh, the pulp was exposed, there were minimal uh, bleeding and the, uh, the lesion was uh, that uh, the pulp exposed was very minimal along with that there was no inflammation plus that uh, pulp uh, was vital. So what uh, here done was the direct pulp capping. So the direct pulp capping approach here was done. The third question, a 60 year old patient, he presented uh, to your clinic uh, with the uh, with the multiple root caries in the posterior teeth due to poor manual dexterity. You have planned to restore these lesions with the amalgam. So what of following design is the best for the restoration? So this one is the box preparation. Option A. This is the conventional uh, design and this one is the box design. So box only preparation, they are recommended when there is small cavity. Small cavity lesions on the proximal surface. So this technique is used when there are no occlusal fissures and there is no pre-existing occlusal restoration. So it is done on the proximal surface and it is used when there are when there is no pre-existing occlusal restoration or there are no grooves on the tooth. No occlusal grooves. and no previous occlusal restoration. So the preparation, it should be narrow and limited to the proximal contact area between the adjacent teeth. The marginal ridge 
should have no occlusal contact with the with the opposite teeth remember that in other words the restored area will not have any contact during biting or chewing to maximize the retention in this case the facial and the lingual wall of the preparation they should oppose each other the facial and the lingual wall should converge occlusally so uh, the retention grooves they can be given in box preparation so uh, uh the retentive groups remember they are mandatory in the box design in the box preparation the retentive grooves they are given they are created at depth of 0.5 mm at a point angle gingival point angle and they extend occlusally so a box only preparation it is a conservative approach to restore a small proximal cavity when there is no occlusal fissure or existing occlusal restoration so this type of preparation it is limited to the proximal surface so that is why your answer is uh, not box preparation coming to the next is the tunnel preparation tunnel preparation uh the tunnel preparation is a cavity uh, preparation that is conservative in nature so it is done it is it is prepared by creating a tunnel underneath the uh, suppose if caries is uh, underneath the underneath the marginal ridge so in order to preserve the marginal ridge what a uh, dentist will do he will prepare a tunnel underneath the uh, marginal ridge so the main idea behind this approach is to remove caries and preserve the the main uh, idea behind a tunnel preparation is to preserve the marginal ridge so the primary advantage is preservation of the marginal ridge by not removing the entire marginal ridge the tooth natural anatomy it is maintained it is a very conservative approach so uh, that will be not your answer uh, now option c slot preparation the answer will be slot preparation well the slot preparation it is it is uh, done for the uh, technique for treating root caries in older patient so here in same uh, case it is a 60 year old patient so it is uh, done in the in the cases with the root caries so multiple root caries are there mentioned so answer is slot preparation so yeah slot preparation it is done for treating root caries in older patient who have gingival recession uh, which exposes the cementum of the tooth root surface so remember the slot preparation slot preparation so suppose uh, there is a cavity on the root surface so that is why the slot designing is uh, it is done the slot preparation they are indicated when the caries lesion it develops on the proximal surface of root remember if the proximal contact uh, contact point does not need restoration if the proximal contact point it does not need restoration then remember you have to done then you have to approach from which side facial side and uh, if a lingual approach it is used when the caries it is lim uh, limited to the lingulo proximal area so while uh, treating caries using the slot preparation the initial outline form it is prepared from the facial direction uh, so that outline forms uh, creating a slot like cavity so the outline form is made uh, made to a sound tooth structure at limited depth, uh, depth actually 
so depth if the no if there is no enamel remember if there is no enamel then the depth is a point 0.75 to 1 mm and if 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 the if there is a if enamel is present then then the depth is at uh, uh, an, an appropriate depth is 1 to 1.25 mm so if the margin is in enamel uh, the outline form it it should be a depth of uh, 1 to 1.25 mm so if the occlusal margin is in enamel if the occlusal margin it's in enamel then the axial depth should be remember 0.5 mm into the dentino enamel junction the external walls of preparation it they should form a 90 degree cabo surface uh, margin angle apart from that retentive grooves can be given uses using one fourth bar so these grooves are given Place then remember uh, the retentive grooves they are prepared in the they can be asked in your question they are prepared in occlusio axial so they are given in occlusally and axial wall and gingival gingivo axial wall so the retentive grooves are given in occlusio occlusal along the occlusal and the axial wall and uh, uh, gingivo axial wall so occlusal axial line angle and the gingivo axial line angle so they are uh, at what depth at 0.3 to 0.5 mm inside the cemental cavo surface margin so th these uh, these retentive grooves will uh, uh, will help to retain the restoration so in summary the float preparation it is done for the root caries involving the creation of a float like cavity on the facial surface of teeth preserving the healthy dentine ensuring proper cavo surface uh, angle and creating the retentive grooves that are required for restoration so answer is slot preparation so let us move to the next question a 29 year old lady uh, came to your clinic with a class 5 cavity in most of his posterior teeth because of occlusal trauma you have decided to restore this cavity with the composite which composite chemistry is indicated for restoration of these cavity well the answer is we will the most suitable composite is one with higher matrix higher matrix and low filler content we know class uh, class 5 cavity in f fraction lesions typically involve These lesions often result from the flexural forces rather than the traditional caries. So, as a result, they, more, they may be more related to tensile and compressive strength. So, to restore this cavity composite resin with high matrix and lower filler content, they are used. Composite with high uh, matrix. Uh, content will have improved flexural properties 
uh, making them to withstand the tensile and compressive forces that are characteristic of abfraction lesions. The high filler content, they are often preferred for the posterior restoration due to their wear resistance and strength. Class 5 lesions related to F fraction uh, may benefit from the unique properties of composite with higher matrix content and lower filler content. So that can make them better handling, uh, that can offer better handling and adaptation. Uh, so let us discuss uh, the uh, the concept of these uh, uh, these matrix and coupling agents and the glass fillers so let us consider a dental composite material used for tooth restoration so in the, in the composite you have two main component number 1 is the filler they are very small solid particles they, that provide strength, hardness and other desirable properties to the, to the composite. So these are the tiny particles that are made up of material like silica. Other is the matrix. Matrix is like just like a glue. It is material that surrounds and bind these tiny particles. It is just like a glue, glue that hold everything in its place. So in the dental composite, the matrix is usually made up of resin material. Now the challenge is that the tiny filler particles and the resin matrix, they are different material and they know and they may not stick together. So this is where the glue coupling agent, uh, that is the silane coupling agent, it comes into play. So the glue coupling agent, it is a special chemical compound added to the composite material during its formulation. So it is designed to chemically bond to both the tiny filler particles and the resin matrix. So this will, uh, this will enhance the bonding between the two material and make them work more efficiently. So the coupling agent, they overall enhances the strength of composite material. So going to so in this example, the glue coupling agent will act as a bridge between the tiny particles and the resin matrix, ensure that they work together effectively to create a strong and durable composite material. So the answer the answer is definitely. higher matrix content and low filler content. Let us move to the next question. While restoring a class 2 cavity on the tooth uh, 3.6, you are applying a Toffelmeyer band and you are facing difficulty in passing the matrix band between um, teeth number 36 and 37. The thickness of band for Toffelmeyer should be so uh, you should use an extra thin Toffelmeyer band here. That is uh, the size is 0 0.0010 inches or 0 0.025 mm. So choose answer C as your choice. So if you are facing difficulty in passing the matrix band, choose an extra thin band. Remember the regular thin and extra thin, their thickness. So this thickness would allow for proper adaptation and placement of the matrix band between the adjacent teeth without causing difficulty in passing through it. So that would provide a snug fit and it helps in achieving a well sealed restoration uh, when restoring the class 2 cavities. Moving to the next question. In a 20 year, uh, 24 years old male patient, you are restoring extensive class 2 cavity by using automatic system. 
so uh, so this one is an auto metric system you can see in the figure so remember it is a retainerless metric system the auto metric system so is uh, is retainerless that means it does not require a separate retainer or retainer ring so it is convenient for class 2 cavity restorations so the key feature of automatic system is its retainerless design so it does not require a separate retainer traditionally metric system such as toffelmeyer metric system this one is the toffelmeyer metric system uh they it required a retainer to hold the matrix in place so uh the uh, the automatic system in contrast to it is self retaining so ivory metric system this one is the ivory metric system so answer is b next question in amyloplasty it is done when the enamel grooves it is done in all except the answer is d enamel grooves extended up to 2/3 of enamel depth well what is enamelplasty enamelplasty it is a essential reshaping the enamel using uh, so enamelplasty is is reshaping the enamel using specialized instruments so it is also known as saucerization so because the reshaped area it is made to resemble a saucer or a shallow dish with the deepest part being at the center of the pit so by creating a smoother and more accessible surface nameloplasty makes the tooth easy to clean so the, uh, so it is important for maintaining good oral hygiene and prevent uh, dental problems it is conservative procedure it does not involves removal of significant amount of tooth structure so uh, nameloplasty it is used to address deep pits and grooves in the enamel uh, that be, can be uh, that can be prone to collecting plaque and debris so the option a shallow enamel development fissures or pits in amble or plasty they can be indicated for shallow development fissures or pits because it aims if to reshape the enamel surface and make it easier to clean second is supplemental grooves it is indicated for the supplemental grooves as it helps to eliminate these irregularities that will make the tooth smoother and more cleansable option c shallow smooth surfaces it can be used to correct shallow smooth surfaces uh, and make it easy to clean option d enamel grooves extended from 2/3 of enamel depth so nameloplasty is not indicated when the enamel grooves they extend significantly into the enamel depth in such case more extensive uh, treatment may be required so it is done when the grooves extend up to less than 1/3 of the enamel depth so in case where the extension is uh, suppose this one is the primary groove and this one is the central groove so if the extension from the primary grooves toward the cusp tip is no more than half of the distance then no cusp capping is required if the extension is from 1/3 to two third of the distance then you have to consider cusp capping if the extension is more than two third the distance then ca uh, uh, cusp capping it is recommended 
so that is the important concept uh, when you have to consider the cusp capping and when nameloplasty it is required you are making a class 1 cavity preparation on tooth 16 during the cavity preparation art of the following can be can determine the location of cavity outline form except it is the answer is depth of lesion so the principle of establishing outline form in dental restoration first of all all the weakened enamel should be removed so it is important to identify and remove all the weakened enamel the weakened enamel may be structurally compromised due to factors like decay or enamel defect so so removing this weakened enamel ensure that the restoration will have a strong foundation all faults should be incorporated dental restoration are not just about repairing damage or weakened areas they also involve creating a restoration that function harmoniously with the natural tooth so here incorporating all faults that means that dent uh, dentist he should consider any existing irregularities like grooves pits or any imperfection in the tooth surface so that could create a smooth and functional surface that that's easy to maintain and clean all the margins should be placed in location that affords good finishing there should be good marginal seals you have to preserve the cuspal strength preserve the marginal ridge strength minimize the facio lingual extension consider enamoplasty connects to close defaults that are less than 0.5 mm apart so these all these feature ensure uh, that the dental restoration they are not only functional but also long lasting so not uh, what are the factors that will affect the outline form in the dental restoration first of all is the extent of the carious lesion so the size location of dental problem whether it's caries a defect or previous faulty restoration that will influence the outline form so that helps you to determine how much tooth structure needs to be removed and how the restoration should be shaped aesthetic consideration involves how the restoration would look especially in the visible area of the mouth uh sometimes the upper and lower teeth they come together and may require adjustment in the outline form this ensure that the restored tooth fits correctly into the patient bite to avoid issue like uh issue like interference or misalignment the cavo surface margin the uh, the choice of restoration ma uh, material affects the cavo surface margin how uh, that means the how the restoration will meet the tooth surface so what are the factors that will affect the outline and initial depth they are the extension of the carious lesion uh relation with the adjacent teeth and the opposing teeth caries index of the patient need of aesthetic and the restorative material that has to be used so for the outline form basically you have to remember the outline uh, the external outline form that is the area of tooth uh, or the enamel margin that has to be included in the finish cavity and other is the internal outline form that includes the inner dimension uh, and details of the prepared cavity the inner outline form it should be prepared carefully in young patient to avoid the pulp exposure as pulp chambers are high in case of young people 
सो आंसर इज सी वाइल्ड रिस्टोरिंग अ क्लास क्लास टू कैप्टीन मेंडिबल मोलर शू प्रेफर टू यूज अ हाई कॉपर अमेलगम एज अ रेस्टोरेशन मटीरियल हाई कॉपर विल हैव इम्प्रूव क्रोजन रेजिस्टेंस ओवर द कन्वेंशनल अलॉय ड्यू टू द सो इन हाई कॉपर द कॉम्पोजिशन हैज बीन मॉडिफाइड टू रिड्यूज द अमाउंट ऑफ टिन दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन अलॉय सो द टिन मर्करी फेस इन कन्वेंशनल अमेलगम इज ससेप्टेबल टू क्रोजन and it can lead to breakdown of amalgam restoration over time so gamma 2 phase so remember gamma 2 is that has been eliminated in the high copper so the, as we all know gamma 2 is the weakest component and it is least stable to corrosion process so by reducing the tin content high copper amalgam minimizes the presence of this phase that contributes to enhanced corrosion resistance so that is why answer is c kerry is promoting is so uh, the kerry is promoting remember the mnemonic punjab patiala or moga se kudiyan that means girls so these are the kerry's promoting element lead platinum manganese selenium cadmium so your answer here is selenium mark that now apart from that the definitely kerryostatic are fluorine phosphorus mildly kerryostatic vanadium polyvinyl boron calcium gold kerry's promoting are selenium magnesium cadmium platinum lead uh, those have no effect are the aluminium barium and iron remember them for your entrance exam point of view so moving to the next question which of following sugar it is most readily utilized by bacteria in the production of kerry's The sugar most readily utilized by bacteria in the production of dental caries is glucose. Well, glucose it is. Well, glucose it's a simple sugar that can be easily fermented by the oral bacteria. That leads to production of acid that can demineralize the tooth enamel and contributes to development of cavities. So other sugars like fructose, lactose, and mannose, as given in the option. Uh, they can be also metabolized by oral bacteria to some extent glucose is the primary contributor to process of caries formation due to its red, ready availability and rapid fermentation by certain type of bacteria in the oral cavity the answer is a using black classification of cavity a pit and fissure lesion on the occlusal surface of molar and premolar is considered as it is class 1 cavity so class 1 cavity is the caries that will affect the pit and fissure on the occlusal occlusal third of the molars and premolars occlusal two third of the molars and lingual part of the and the lingual part of the anterior teeth class 2 is the caries affecting the proximal surface of the molars and the premolars the class 3 is the caries affecting the proximal surface of uh central incisors lateral incisors and cuspid without the involvement of the incisal edge class 4 is the caries affecting proximal including the uh proximal surfaces of central incisor lateral incisor cuspid involving the incisal edge class 5 caries affecting gingival one third of the facial lingual surfaces of anterior or posterior teeth class 6 is the caries affecting the cusp tip of the molars premolars etc so pit and fissure lesion on the occlusal surface and premolars occlusal surface of molar premolar is the class 1 cavity 
the following features of resistance form in cavity preparation what is a resistance form primary resistance form it refers to the shape and placement of the preparation walls in such a way that enables both the lateral tooth and the restoration to withstand the stress of the masticatory forces without fracturing so what are the factors that affect the resistance force is the amount of occlusal contact type of restorative uh, restoration used and amount of the remaining tooth structure so feature of resistance form is the number one is the box shaped preparation to enhance the restoration to occluding to occlusal loading uh, the preparation takes a box shaped configuration that presents with the flat pulpal and gingival floor so that helps to the preparation to withstand the masticatory forces along along the long axis a uh, strong marginal ridge areas external walls they are limited to allow creation of strong marginal ridge areas inclusion of the weakened tooth structures weakened tooth structure may be included in preparation to avoid fracture under the masticatory forces uh, rounding of internal line angles strong marginal ridge rounding of internal line angles to reduce the stress concentration within the tooth internal line angle should be internal line angle should be they should be uh, rounded uh, consideration of cusp capping so cusp capping depending upon the amount of remaining tooth structure cusp capping may be considered to provide additional retention and resistance to uh, to the fracture so answer here would be c dovetail and gingival seat floor they are the features of retention form apart from that there should be uh, the pulpal and gingival wall should be horizontal and prepared perpendicular to the long axis the weakened tooth structure should be removed so these are the features of the resistance form in the cavity preparation the partial bevel uh, involves well the bevel in the dentistry it refers to angled or sloped surface for the edge that is created along the margin of cavity uh, so this surface is typically directed away from the main cavity preparation and it is placed on the cavo surface margin so bevels are given to enhance the retention form so in the context of cast inlay a bevel may be applied to margin of cavity preparation a cast inlay is type of dental restoration that is custom made in the dental laboratory and then cemented or bonded into the prepared cavity so bevels can be used in cavity preparation for cast inlays or various purposes the first is the partial bevel this one is the partial bevel it involves only a part of enamel that involves removing only a part of enamel so the uh, check this red line a part of enamel uh, less than the 2/3 of its thickness and it is used to trim enamel at the margins of the cavity preparation so the answer is part of enamel uh, used for removal of weakened uh, enamel is the partial bevel Uh, short bevel short bevel is involves the entire enamel wall but not the dentine so it is used for cast gold inlays the long bevels involves all the enamel and approximately half of the dentine so it can be used in inlay cavities full bevel full bevel means along the whole length includes the entire enamel and dentinal wall of preparation it is used as last resort and removes most and uh, uh, the counter bevel 
it is used when cusp require capping for protection the hollow ground bevel it is a concave bevel that can be applied to any of above bevel bevel uh, so the partial bevel involves removing only a part of enamel wall so they are used uh, in cast restoration so partial bevel they are not used in cast restoration they are typically employed for purposes like preserving the weakened enamel at the margins the long bevel the long bevel which involves removing all the enamel and approximately half of the dentinal wall it it is used in uh, class 1 cavities class 2 cavities and class 2 preparation for cast restorations so the, uh, these bevels would help to preserve the resistance and retention form the short bevel the short bevel involves the entire enamel wall but not the dentin they are suitable for cast alloys in type 1 and type 2 cavity preparation the full bevel which include the entire enamel and dentin wall they they are considered when when other bevels they are not sufficient to meet the clinical need of specific case the hollow ground bevel uh, as discussed it is a concave bevel it is uh, that is used in type 4 and type 5 cast restorations counter bevel it is used for uh, cusp capping next question beginning palpably the uh, at the advancing edge of dentinal caries adjacent to normal dentin these zones so beginning from the palpal side the zone number 1 is the zone of fatty degeneration of tombs so remember as the carious lesion it progress various carious zone uh, various carious dentin may be the uh, the carious dentin uh, it it assume a shape of a triangle so apex is toward the pulp and base it is toward the enamel so it can be divided into three zone from moving from the pulpal side to the outer side so uh, zone number 1 is zone of fatty degeneration of tombs and most outer zone is zone of decomposed dentin so zone 1 is the zone of fatty degeneration of tomb second is zone of uh, dentin sclerosis uh, characterized by deposition of calcium salts in the dentinal tubules the third is zone of decalcification of dentin uh, a narrow preceding bacterial invasion and zone four is a zone of bacterial invasion of decalcified but intact dentin so the correct answer is uh, zone 4 it is zone of bacterial invasion of decalcified but intact dentin zone 3 uh, zone of dentinal sclerosis with the dental tubule salts it is zone 2 zone of fatty degeneration it is zone 1 and zone of decalcification of dentin it is zone 3 so answer correct is zone 4 the correct sequence of dental caries formation the answer is d cariogenic food that leads to uh, accumulation of cariogenic food that lead to bi uh, dental biofilm which further lead to acid formation that causes demineralization and that leads to dental caries so answer is d an easy question which of following would not be a form of matrix for an anterior aesthetic restoration the answer is c universal metal matrix band a uni uh, universal metal matrix band would not be suitable form of matrix for the anterior aesthetic restoration 
The cellulite strip, it is a thin flexible plastic strip that is used as a matrix for the anterior aesthetic restoration. It is used in the composite resin filling for the front teeth. Celluloid crown, they are similar to the cellular strips made up of flexible plastic. It is used to create a temporary crown for the tooth, often in the anterior aesthetic cases. A universal metal matrix band, it is used in the posterior region, such as amalgam fillings. So it provides a rigid form of shaping the material being placed into the tooth cavity. So metal matrix band, they are not used in anterior aesthetic restoration. The class 5 composite matrix, it is uh, when the uh, it is used in the case of class 5 composite cavity. So they are idle in achieving contour and aesthetic in anterior restoration involving the composite material. The pit and fissure sealant inability to prevent caries is due to the inadequate moisture control. The pit and fissure sealants they are applied to the occlusal surface of the teeth. To prevent caries by sealing of deep grooves and fissure. So bacteria where bacteria accumulates. So inadequate moisture control during application of sealants, it can compromise their effectiveness. Moisture contamination can interfere with the bonding of sealant to tooth surface that leads to leakage and decrease protection against caries. So proper isolation and moisture control, they are important when you apply pit and fissure sealant. So they are required, proper moisture control is required for optimal adhesion and sealing. So the tooth surface should be moisture free to maximize the sealant ability to prevent caries. The theory of the theory of dental caries that promote that caries was caused by action of acid formed by fermentation of food particles around the tooth. It's the chemical theory of dental caries. Proposed that the, uh, the caries was caused by action of acid formed by fermentation of food particles around the teeth. So this theory is based upon the Robertson. That production of acid as result of food fermentation it plays a role in development of dental decay. The type of wedging with fluting roots is the wedge wedging. So in the wedge wedging technique, two wedges are used. One wedge, it is inserted from the lingual side and other wedge is inserted at 90 degree to the, to the first wedge. So these are indicated when, when while treating the mesial aspect of maxillary first maxillary first premolar because of presence of fluids what is double wedging double wedging in which two wedge are used one from the uh, buccal side and other is from the lingual side So when there is spacing between the adjacent tooth, when we are single uh, wedge is not sufficient. When uh, there is widening of proximal box in the buccolingual area, a double wedging technique is used. Wedge wedging, it is indicated in case of when there is concavity on the proximal root surface. Other is piggy back wedging. In this technique, two wedges are used. Uh, the larger wedge, it is used as, as normally while the other smaller wedge is inserted above the, 
above the larger one. So it is indicated in case of shallow proximal box with a gingival recession. The direction of the mesial and distal wall in class 5 cavity it is determined by it is determined by the direction of the enamel rods. Which of following is a not component of modified MCM solution? Well, MC in solution versus modified MC in solution. MC in solution, it contains one part of anesthetic ether that removes the surface debris, five parts of hydrochloric acid that itches the enamel, and five parts of hydrogen peroxide that bleaches the enamel. In the modified MCN solution, instead of using 20 percent, uh, instead of using 36 percent hydrochloric acid, the solution that is used is 20 percent sodium hydroxide. So B is not used. Since sodium hydroxide it is highly alkaline in nature, it will dissolve calcium of the enamel at slower rate. So hence modified uh, solution it is conservative, it is considered to be slower but safer alternative to MC in solution. So the sodium hydroxide it will dissolve the calcium of the enamel at the slower rate. Single or overlapping wedge shaped lesions with rough margin and corrugated enamel appearance, it refers to ab fraction. So these are the ab fractions. So wedge shaped defect with the rough margin, they are characteristic of ab fraction. Ab fraction it is a type of dental wear that results from the mechanical stress caused by tooth flexure during the tooth grinding or clenching. When pin are used in amalgam, the strength, the strength would decrease. So when the pin they are used in amalgam restoration, the overall strength of amalgam typically decreases. As pins we know they can provide is retention, additional retention and resistance form. So they can also create perforation and irregularities in amalgam that can lead to stress concentration and reduction in the overall strength of the amalgam. The main purpose of trituration is, well trituration is a process of mixing the dental amalgam with the liquid mercury to form a plastic mass that can be condensed into the prepared tooth cavity. The main purpose of Trituration is to coat the loy particle with the mercury, creating plastic mass that is workable and can be placed into tooth cavity for amalgam restoration. So the primary goal of trituration is to ensure that the alloy particles they are coated with mercury to create a workable uh, to create a workable amalgam mixture. Universal matrix band retainer, it is also known as Toffelmeyer matrix. Universal matrix band retainer, it is also known as uh, Toffelmeyer matrix. It is used for uh, placing and securing matrix band during restoration procedure, typically for the class 2 restoration, where the mesial and the distal surfaces they are involved. Next question is the thickness of band material used with the Toffelmeyer retainer. Already discussed, the answer is T. The smear layer it consists of well the smear layer it is a thin 
altered surface on the dentine typically a few a few micrometer in thickness it is it consists of denatured collagen hydroxyapatite and cutting debris so this smear layer it will provide a protective barrier by occluding the dentinal tubules with the debris that are known as smear plugs and and can cause reducing dental permeability and sensitivity it can interfere with the chemical and mechanical bonding of the restorative material to the tooth structure so they uh, they consist of enamel debris microorganism as well as dentinal chips the minor modification done in existing tooth contour to improve smile it is it is cosmetic contouring cosmetic contouring is also known as tooth contouring it is a dental procedure in which minor modification they are made to existing tooth contours to improve the appearance of the smile so that can involve the reshaping or smoothening of the enamel of the tooth to correct the minor imperfections the smile contouring is not a widely recognized term it may refer to dental procedure similar to cosmetic contouring aimed at improving the appearance of the person's smile the microdentistry is approach that focus on the preservation of as much as healthy tooth structure as possible while treating the uh, dental problems it uh, so it involves use of advanced diagnostic tools to detect and treat the dental issues enamel reshaping it is another term for the cosmetic contouring it refers to process of making minor modification to enamel of the tooth to improve their appearance so your answer is cosmetic contouring geomers geomers they are the dental restorative material that are based on pre reactive glass enamel technology so in this technology uh, fluoro alumino silicate glass it reacts with the polyalkanoic acid in water prior to insertion into the main matrix of restorative material so that would enhance the properties and the performance of the restoration the shade determination of composite restoration on a tooth should be done before the placement of the rubber dam so that allows for more accurate shade matching that are similar to those under the actual restorative procedure so the shade matching shade selection it is influenced by factor like the lightening conditions and moisture on the tooth surface so therefore they options are not so moving to the another question the cavo surface angle for inlay cavity preparation is well first of all you should know what is cavo surface angle so it is the angle that is formed by the junction of the prepared tooth wall suppose you have prepared this uh, this tooth wall and so it is the angle that is formed by junction of the prepared tooth wall and the external surface of the tooth so which one is the, this one is the external surface of the tooth so this angle so this angle refers to the cavo surface angle so cavo surface angle it is defined as the angle that is formed by junction of the prepared tooth wall and the external surface of the and this external surface of the tooth so this angle it is important in dental restoration at as it will impact the fit stability and longevity of the restoration so why why do the cavo surface angle matter its significance lies in the role in ensuring the longevity and stability of the dental restoration so dentist 
aims to create an ideal cavo surface angle. The prepared cavity wall should meet the external tooth surface at angle that provides the mechanical re uh, retention and resistance form for the restorative material. So a well designed cavo surface angle would help to retain the filling material within the cavity. It will prevent the filling from getting dislodging uh, due to the biting chewing forces. An improper cavo surface angle can create stress points that may lead to restorative failure. Now what is this cavo? Uh, the question is the cavo surface angle for the inlay cavity preparation is. Well the cavo surface angle will depend upon the type of the restorative material that is being used. When preparing a tooth for a composite filling or a amalgam filling, the cavo surface angle typically ranges from 90 degree. That is for the amalgam. Whereas for the gold inlays, onlays, uh, the cavo surface angle is around 150 degree. To ensure that the inlay it remains securely in the place, the cavity must be prepared in a way that provides both retention and the resistance foam. So cavo surface angle of 150 degree helps in achieving this balance. So that is why your answer is 150 degree. The cavo surface angle for the inlay cavity preparation is how much? It's 150 degree. Next question, the factors uh, that most affect the adaptation of gold wall to the cavity walls uh, that affect the adaptation of gold foil to the cavity walls. It's the direction of force that is applied. So in order to ensure maximum adaptation of gold, the force of conden uh, condensation should be directed at, it should be directed at 45 degree. So this angle is 45 degree. So this is the condenser and this is angle at which the force of condensation should be directed. So suppose after that the force of condensation is a 90 degree. So suppose this one increment has been uh, the first increment has been done at the 45 degree. After that uh, the force of condensation is at 90 degree at 90 degree to the previous condensed gold. So that will, uh, the, this 90 degree would prevent, uh, prevent the displacement of gold piece that has been already condensed. So that is why the direction of force it is important. So while condensing a piece of direct gold, you have to start at the one end and proceed uh, to the other. So uh, you have to just start from the center and reach toward the periphery. So start at the one side of cavity and proceed in straight line to the opposite side. Then return to the original site on a different straight line. So during a condensation process, the condenser should overlap at least uh, at least half of the previous condensed uh, area that is that is known as a stepping. So that is again important for your exam point of view. So stepping involves the overlapping the previous area of a condenser stroke by half or one fourth. So suppose so the, uh, uh, the next is to cover at least one fourth of or at least one half of the area. So this uniform comp pressure and uh, compaction uh, that is essential for the hardening and welding of the restoration. So due to this a uh, cohesive mass is achieved. So this also helps to eliminate voids. The stepping process, it helps to eliminate the voids. So the, apart from that, it will 
improve the adaptation of the restorative material to the cavity walls. So condenser, they are the instrument that is used in delivering the forces of compaction to the direct gold. So this one is the condenser. So it, uh, there are two types of condenser. You have to remember that the two types of condenser. One is the one is the hand condenser, and other is electro condenser. So the hand condenser they are used with the hand mallet. They have a long shank, whereas the condenser for the electro mallets, these condenser have a short shank that fits into the melting hand piece and they are used uh, with the electro mallet the nib the nib it comes in various shape and size there can be a round nib parallelogram nib or rectangular nib So all these condenser nibs, they have pyramidal serration to prevent slipping on the gold, ensuring a efficient condensation. So that is why the direction of force is very important. It is the most important factor that affects the adaptation of gold foil to the cavity walls. So that is your answer. Moving to the next question, the cohesion of gold foil it is an example of well cohesion it ref, it refers to the attraction of atoms of molecules of the same substance right in the case of gold foil this uh, this uh, cohesion it is achieved through atomic attractions that is a form of bonding so so the gold foil it is it is composed of go, uh, it is composed of gold atoms which are closely packed so these gold atoms will have st uh, strong atomic attractions with each other that is why they remain cohesive so now when the gold foil it is condensed or packed in a cavity preparation the atoms at the interference of the foil layer come into very close proximity so due to their natural atomic attraction, these gold foils tend to bond or weld together at molecular level. So this welding action occurs as a result of mechanical pressure that is applied during, during the condensation process that we have already discussed. So as more and more gold foil it is condensed and welded together, it forms a solid mass of restoration. So that create a durable restorations. So cohesion in the gold foil restoration, it is result of strong atomic attractions between gold atom that leads to welding together. Next question, another name of electric precipitate of gold, it's the matte gold. Matte gold is another name of gold that is produced by process that is known as electrolytic uh, precipitation. So what is matte gold? Matte gold, it is a crystalline gold that is formed in strips. So matte gold, they are cohesive. They can be cut by dentist into desired shape. Uh, so matte gold, they are recommended Remember, they are recommended for internal building up of restoration. What is goldent? Goldent, it is a combination of powdered gold and gold foil. So goldent, it is a combination of powdered gold and gold foil. The ratio is 95 is the powdered, 95% is the powdered gold and 5% is the gold foil. The powdered gold, it is also known as EZ gold. So powdered gold, it is 
a blend of cold particles that has been broken down into fine particles that means they have been atomized so the other name of electrolytic precipitate of gold it is the matte gold due for the class 5 direct filling gold preparation the retentic retention points they are in well in the class 5 cavity it has generally a trapezoidal outline that uh, typically involves the occlusion and gingival uh, gingival line angles so the main retentive features are the uh, they are the gingival axial line angles so that helps to uh, that helps to ensure there is proper retention of the gold restoration in the tooth so answer is occlusal and the gingival uh, gingival line angles in the tooth so retentive points are made at the gingival axial line angles uh the packable a uh, composite they are based on which principle well uh, the concept of condensable or packable composite it is based upon polymer rigid inorganic material matrix material that is p r i w m that stands for polymer rigid inorganic matrix material so imagine a scenario where a patient require a class 2 dental restoration that involves the repairing a cavity on the on the occlusal surface so traditionally the dental composite they consist of uh, they consist of resin matrix mixed with the filler particles where the resin uh, will encapsulate the filler particles however in the packable composite uh they are made up of two components uh one is the organic resin matrix and other is the inorganic ceramic filler component now the filler component it will mainly consist of materials like aluminum oxide and glass particles such as barium aluminum silicate so here the resin it is incorporated into fibrous ceramic filler network so that means that the resin it is distributed within the fibrous structure of the ceramic filler so the irregular shape glass particles they will create spaces within the filler particles when the resin uh, so when the resin the resin it it will interact with the irregular glass particles that lead to bonding so uh, th this type of material will be advantages as they have increase flexural strength low wear high curing depth and decrease shrinkage so the packable composite they are based upon a polymer rigid inorganic matrix material concept which of following should be used to clean the operating site before giving uh giving a composite restoration before the insertion of composite restoration it is common practice to clean the op operating site with pumice slurry so this pumice slurry it is used to remove the plaque pellicle and superficial stains from the tooth surface ensuring the tooth it is clean and prepared for the bonding process so Uh, profile paste containing glycerin and fluoride they should be avoided 
as they may interact with the acidizing technique and compromise the bonding moving to the next question type 1 itching pattern involves so in type 1 itching pattern the central part of enamel rods it is dissolved whereas the a periphery peripheral part is intact so central uh, so it involves the central part of the enamel rod whereas the peripheral part is intact whereas in type 2 in type 2 the uh, the peripheral part is removed and type 3 it is a mixed pattern so your answer is type 1 regret uh, regarding the heat produced during the cavity preparation which of following is false the answer is c the correct statement is that the steel burst they produce uh it is the steel burst that produce more heat as compared to the carbi carbide burst the steel burst they are less efficient at cutting and tends to generate more heat during the cutting process whereas the carbide burst they are known for their efficiency and ability to cut efficiently with less heat generation longer the time of cutting greater is the local temperature raise so when the dental instrument they are used to prepare a cavity in the tooth friction between the instrument and tooth that will generate heat so longer the cutting procedure more heat is produced in the localized area use of coolant decreases the amount of heat production coolant in the form of water uh, or a specialized dental spray it is used during dental procedure to reduce the heat generated by the cutting instrument so that helps to dissipate the heat and keep the tooth and surrounding tissue cooler without coolant diamond instrument generate more damaging heat so diamond instrument they are known for their efficiency in cutting but they can generate more damaging heat if used without coolant so proper cooling it is essential when using the diamond instruments to prevent the excessive heat build up uh, during the class 2 cavity axial wall depth in crown and root should be well well in class 2 cavity preparation the axial wall depth in the crown and root they are important consideration so the crown axial depth it is remember the crown axial depth it is 0.5 to 0.6 mm it's within the enamel of the occlusal surface so the main objective is to remove the carious lesion or damaged enamel and provide space for the restorative material so a shallow depth in occlusion portion it helps to preserve as much as healthy tooth structure as possible whereas in the case of uh, root the axial depth should be 0.75 to 0.8 so in the root it is slightly deeper than the crown so this depth it is necessary to ensure that the restoration extends below the gingival margin and provide sufficient retention and the resistance form so the deeper root axial wall it helps to ensure that the restorative material it bonds well within the tooth structure reducing the risk of marginal leakage the next question after the restoration the order of removal of matrix and wedge so after restoration the re order of removal of matrix band the order is the answer is first you have to rem uh, remove the retainer then matrix band and then the wedge so first of all you have to loose and remove the retainer 
the retainer, it is the part of the matrix system that holds the matrix band in place around the tooth being restored. So you have to detach the retainer from the band. So this is done while the wedges they are in place. So while removing the retainer it is essential to stabilize the matrix band. So place a fingertip on the occlusal surface of the stored tooth to prevent sudden movement or talking. So remove the matrix band with the retainer removed the matrix stabilized gently slide each end of matrix band in oblique direction and move it in an occlusal direction. So this technique would minimize the risk of fracturing the marginal ridge while dislodging the band. After the matrix band they are removed you can proceed to remove the wedges. So wedges they are just used to create space between the teeth to ensure a proper contact point. So once the wedges they are out check for any excess material in the interproximal area uh, such as amalgam or composite. So you can use amalgam knife or an explorer to remove any excess material. The next question all are the indication for the complex restoration except so the uh, the uh, what are the contraindications if the patient it has significant occlusal problems that is the contraindication so that is not an indication instead it is a contraindication if the tooth cannot be restored properly with the direct uh, restoration uh, that is a contraindication. So answer is C. The pattern of uh, caries progressing appears to have a lesion with the base toward the enamel and apex toward the dentino enamel junction. It is it is caries on the smooth surface. So that will form a, like a triangle. It uh, the base is toward the enamel surface, and the apex it is toward the dentino enamel junction. The caries detecting dye it can stain the following except. So the caries detecting dye, uh, they do not typically stain the reversibly denatured collagen. So the reversible denatured collagen that indicates a stage of demineralization where the, uh, where the collagen structure it has not become irreversible damage. So the caries detecting dye they are more effective uh, when the irreversible damage has occurred. So answer is C. The posterior composite they are contraindicated in the, uh, the composite resin restoration. They require a good oral hygiene maintenance to prevent to prevent the reoccurrence decay and ensure the longevity of restoration. So the poor oral hygiene will lead to will lead to increased risk of caries. And that would cause failure of restoration. So answer is C. So the posterior composite they are con uh, contraindicated in these conditions. So moving to the question important factor in determining the efficiency of the bar. The answer is spiral angle. The spiral angle 
it is the angle that is formed by the long axis of uh, suppose uh, this one is the bar and this one is its long axis and this one is the helical fluids or ridges in it so this angle that is formed by the long axis and the and the helical fluids or ridges on the bar surface so this angle is known as spiral angle so the uh, in the dental tools like the burrs the efficiency of the burr it is it is determined by the uh, spiral angle so suppose there are two burrs uh, one burr has a large spiral angle so uh, here the cutting edges they are positioned at a steeper angle so the cutting edges there are at steeper angle so that results in more aggressive cutting so more spiral angle if the angle is spiral angle is more then there will be aggressive cutting so that is it is well suited for the task that requires quick material removal like shaping a tooth before the crown placement other bar has a small spiral angle so consider other bar having a small spiral angle so this uh, due to its uh, the small spiral angle its designs offer a smooth and more controlled cutting so it is ideal for the precision works like fine detailing or smoothing tooth surface after the initial shaping so if uh, suppose uh, if there will be large spiral angle there would be aggressive cutting that would lead to that would generate more heat and vibration and can damage the tooth as well as the bud so buds with a small cutting uh, angle uh, they will have a smoother cutting experience however they might not remove material as rapidly as burrs with the large spiral angle so the efficiency of burr it would be dependent upon the spiral angle that's your answer next question is the rake angle is defined as the rake angle is the angle between the rake face so this one is the rake face the angle between the rake face and the axis of the burr so this angle is the known as rake angle so rake face what do you mean by rake face it is the it is uh, the cut uh, the surface of cutting edge is known as rake face suppose uh, the bar uh, it is moving in this uh, direction so on cross section you would see on cross section you would see this so this rake angle it is essential in determining how efficiently the bur cuts during the dental procedure so each bur blade it has two sides one is the uh, uh, rake one is the rake face and other is the clearance face so this one is the clearance face three angles that determine the cutting performance they are one is the number one is the rake angle second is the edge angle and the third is the clearance angle so remember for cutting hard and brittle materials like tooth structure a negative rake angle is preferred so in this the rake face this rake face would be ahead of the radius that means it is inclined forward so a negative rake angle would minimize the risk of fracture along the cutting edge so a negative rake angle remember it would increase the bar life so your answer is the rake angle it is the angle between the rake face and the axis of the bar moving to the next question 
what do you mean by run out so the term run out in the context of bar it refers to the maximum displacement of the bar from its long axis suppose this one is the bar if it gets displaced from its axis uh so it's the displacement of the bar head from its long axis during rotation so longer the bar shank more would be the run out shorter the bar shank lesser would be the run out so run out it is about how smoothly a bar spins when it is cutting something imagine you are spinning a top if it's wobble while spinning it won't work well so run out will measure this wobbling or vibration in the bar so answer is b run out it's the maximum displacement of bar along its long axis of shank during the rotation moving to the next question the curves are well the curves so these are the curves and these are the slopes in case of pin retained amalgam so this is a pin retained cavity preparation designed for the pin retained amalgam so these are the secondary mechanical retention and features so what are the secondary uh, mechanical retentive features they are the locks grooves curves skirts so these all are secondary mechanical retention features so moving to the next question amalcor restoration is it involves the removal of the specific gutta percha from the coronal from the coronal third of the root canal followed by placement of core build material in this space along with the along with the pulp chambers so answer is b the next question moving to the next question the critical ph the critical ph for demineralization is well the critical ph for the demineralization it varies between the enamel and dentine for the enamel this value is 5.5 and for the dentine this value is 6.2 so below this critical ph value the oral environment become acidic that causes demineralization of the tooth structure that leads to development of the dental caries so bacteria in the mouth particularly the streptococcus mutans they can metabolize sugar and produced acid so when the ph of the oral environment it falls below the 5.5 range uh that the uh, that leads to acidic environment that can cause demineralization of tooth enamel we know that the tooth enamel it is primarily composed of minerals like hydroxyapatite so that can dissolve in the acidic environment so when the ph rises above the critical ph uh typically during periods when acids are not being produced or when the saliva it helps to buffer and neutralize the acid so the minerals like the calcium and phosphate they form from the saliva they can be deposited back onto the tooth surface so this process it is known as remineralization so maintaining a ph above the 5.5 through practice like regular dentine hygiene balanced diet brushing flossing that can help to prevent tooth enamel demineralization and development of the dental caries so the critical ph the value is 5.5 for the enamel and 6.2 for the dentine the first histological the first histopathological changes in enamel caries there will be loss of the interprismatic substance so the first histopathology histopathological change in the enamel caries involves the loss of interprismatic substance this is an early sign of demineralization in the enamel caries and it occurs before more significant changes such as the disintegration of 
enamel prison or chalky white areas of decalcification they are seen next question identify the metric system this is carison metric system which of following it is not basis for the carries uh, classification the answer is uh, etiology well the etiology it is not typically the basis for the classifying the uh, dental caries it is based upon other factors like location progression mode of attack and age of patient uh, caries originating on root it is more alarming because the answer is all of above uh, root caries it can progress more rapidly than caries on enamel surface they are often without they are often asymptomatic uh, root caries are closer to the pulp chamber increasing the risk of pulp involvement and pulp necrosis uh, due to their uh, due to their uh, their their unique presence they can be more difficult to treat and restore so answer is all of them the varnay cond uh, condenser so varnay condenser it is it is used in direct filling gold so it has a rectangular uh, it has a rectangular shape uh, face that is that is around 1.1 1 .1 to 1.3 mm so this rectangular face allow for precise placement and condensation of the dental restoration so the primary function of this varnay condenser is to condense or pack the dental restorative material into the prepared tooth cavity so that helps to ensure proper adaptation of material to the cavity walls reducing the voids and improve the overall inter integrity and longevity of the uh, restorative material the flare for the proximal valve for cost restoration the answer is 100 to 110 so that helps in achieving the proper taper and convergence for the restoration which of following is not an advantages of beveling composite restoration well the advantage of bevel the composite restoration are all except the answer is compo uh, compensate for the uh the shrinkage so the primary uh, benefit is uh including adjacent minor defect enhancing the aesthetic quality and improving the marginal seal the grasp that is not accepted in operative dentistry it's the conventional pen grasp well we have discussed all these in your uh, instrument option uh, chapter so go through that chapter well discussed in that the next question in amyloplasty regarding which of following is true regarding in amyloplasty the answer is in amyloplasty need not to be Uh, restored we know in amyloplasty it is the removal of the shallow developmental fissures or pits to create a smooth or uh, smooth uh, saucer shaped surface that is self cleansing so that can be applied not only to fissures but also the deep supplemental grooves so uh, the answer is in amyloplasty need not to be restored when placing a matrix band for the class 2 amalgam the gingival occlusal width of band should be trimmed the answer is at least 1 mm greater than the expected height of the marginal ridge so this extra width allows for the proper adaptation of the band and ensure that amalgam and ensure that the filling like amalgam restoration will be adequately contoured and contact uh, will be in contact with the adjacent tooth structure so trimming the matrix band to this dimension it helps to create a tight seal around the tooth prevent excessive material from getting out and facilitate the creation of well contoured and properly shaped restoration gingivally the depth of class 5 cavity it's it's 0.57 to 1 mm 
so remember this uh, diagram the composite they are retained by feature of they are retained by the micro mechanical interlocking so this occurs when the primer it flows into the surface irregularities that creates a, that creates uh acid aging enamel the created by acid aging enamel forming resin tags that will provide micro mechanical bonding uh, to the tooth structure the main disadvantage of composite of not being recommended for class 2 posterior restoration the answer the answer is c the main disadvantage of composite is that they exhibit greater occlusion wear compared to materials like amalgam so this means that the composite restoration may wear down more quickly when subjected to forces of chewing and grinding that make them a less suitable for class 2 posterior restoration when occlusion wear it is concerned in class 3 restoration of the distal surface of canine the restorative material of choice next to gold is it's the amalgam so moving to the question the first number on those instrument having a three number formula is so the answer is width of blade in one tenth of mm so for a three number formula uh, the first number would represent the width of blade in one tenth of mm that's your answer the second number would represent the length and the third would represents the angle that is formed by the blade in uh, centigrade so uh, the width the length and the angle now the four number formula uh, uh, that would represents what would the four number unit formula represents the first number would uh, represents the width of blade uh, so this width blade width the second number would represents the angle that is formed by the primary cutting edge so this one is the primary cutting edge and the long axis of the and the long axis of the uh, instrument handle in a clockwise direction so this clockwise direction would represents the second number formula uh, the second number the third number would represents the length of blade in mm so this length blade length and fourth would represents the angle that is formed by the blade so this angle so this axis and this long axis so the blade and the long axis of instrument it's the blade angle so your answer is the first number would represent the width here uh, next question the shank of the dental hand cutting instrument joins the blade uh, so suppose this one is the instrument this one is the handle this one will be the shank portion and here it would be the blade portion and this area it would be the cutting edge the shank of the dental hand cutting edge so this shank uh, joins the blade it joins the blade to the handle so this handle so blade it is the working point of instrument that is responsible uh, It, uh, the blade it is the working part of instrument shank it is the intermediate section of the instrument that connect blade to the handle the handle that provides the grip and control and allows to manipulate the blade during the dental procedure uh, next question a small anti rotational groove that is form to prevent rotation of endodontic is uh, post it is prepared on the it is prepared on the area where the root canal is bulkiest so here you would see a anti rotational uh, notch so it is given where the root portion is bulkiest so in the endodontics when preparing a root canal for placement of the endodontic post it is important 
to prevent it is important to create a anti rotational groove or keyway that we do in order to prevent the rotation of the post so in order to prevent the rotation of post within canal a groove here it is given that is anti rotational groove so it is created where the root canal it is bulkiest so the purpose is to prevent the post from rotating within the canal that is important for the stability and placement of post and restoration uh, the restoration that will be placed on the top of the post so to create a anti rotational groove remember number 170 bar it is used so the groove it should be cut to depth of around 0.6 mm and it should extend up to canal to the length of the cutting blade of the bar that is around the length should be around 4 mm so by doing this by creating a groove the endodontic post it can be securely placed in the root canal so that the post it stays in the correct position so that would uh, prevent a rotation give stability and uh, we also will give a long term success so answer would be d moving to the next question uh, in dental bar the angle that is formed by the back of the uh, by the back of the blade and the tooth surface so this angle is known as clearing clearance angle so it is a clearance angle it is the angle that is formed between the back uh, and that is also known as trailing side the front side is the rake face that is the leading side so the angle that is formed by the uh, by the cutting by the uh, formed by the back of the cutting blade on the bar and the surface of tooth that is being cut so when a dental bar cutting edge makes a contact with the tooth surface there is frictional force at its play so this friction would generate heat and results in wear and tear of the cutting edge of the bar so over time the cutting edge of the bar that experiences wear due to the friction so increasing the clearance angle in the dental bar it it is a way to reduce the rapid dulling of the bar, bar's cutting edge so larger clearance angle provides more space between the cutting edge and the tooth surface and thereby reducing the friction uh next question the type of the chisel uh and blade slightly curved is uh, it's the on uh, option b now what are the various types of chisels that we can use is the straight chisel bedel straight chisel or bin angle chisel so chisels can be of three types straight chisel uh, bedel straight chisel or the bin angle chisel so these are the chisels so chisel we know that it is used for splitting the undermined enamel and it is used for placing grooves enamel hatchet they are used for cutting and removing the tooth enamel particularly in the cavity preparation and tooth restoration procedure so it has a bevel edge that is designed to efficiently uh, remove the enamel and do cavity shaping so these are the gmt so they can be available in the left and right uh, form so they are used for the shaping and beveling the gingival margin of the dental restorations so a left G, uh, in the left gmt the curved blade it is oriented to the so it can be of left side or right side the uh, so in a left so this one is the left side 
uh, and this one is the uh, right side so in the, uh, the when the curve of the blade extends to the uh, when the curve of blade it extends to the left side it is the left handed when the curve it extends to the right side it is uh, it is right side the next question which of following is associated with increase incidence of caries so the answer is uh, s stratus so it is associated with the it is associated with caries the s sanguis and s mitis they are uh, they can be involved in the formation of a dental plaque uh, but they are not cariogenic whereas the s stratus it is associated with the increase incidence of caries we know the cariogenic potential of s mutans it is due to its ability to metabolize the dietary sugars and uh, that produces acids so this acid product uh, production it lowers the ph in the oral environment that causes that in all causes demineralization of the tooth enamel that leads to caries process uh, the right rear condition uh, right rear operator position refers to so this one is the right rear that's the 11 o'clock position so uh, the right the right front position is at 7 o'clock remember it is suitable for working in the mandibular anterior region mandibular right posterior teeth maxillary anterior teeth the right position is at 9 o'clock position so in this position the operator stands at right angle directly to right of the patient it is ideal for working on the facial surface of the maxillary and mandibular right posterior teeth right rear position that is asked in question the answer is 11 o'clock so it provides us to most areas of tooth the operator stands just behind and slight to the right of the patient so it offers view of lingual and occlusion surface of the maxillary teeth for the mandibular teeth direct vision it is mainly based on the left side uh, the amount of force that is needed to compact the direct filling gold it is influenced by well it is influenced by the uh, by the surface area of the condenser so the force that is needed for compaction it is most directly related to the surface area of the condenser next question during application of rubber dam all of following can be used as a lubricant except the answer is vaseline vaseline it is not a suitable lubricant for rubber dam it is remember it is oil based whereas soapy water shaving creams soap creams they are water soluble the cavity formation in a tooth due to the dental caries it's due to the well the cavity formation in a, the tooth due to dental caries it is due to the lateral spread so this lateral spread uh, of the caries along the dentino enamel junction so the later spread of caries along the dentino enamel junction and weakening of overlying enamel it is a critical aspect of the cavity formation
for class 5 cavity for amalgam so in class 5 cavity uh, the mesial and distal wall said so they diverge externally additionally there is convexity in the gingival third and occlusal third uh, leading to occlusal and gingival wall that diverge externally so your answer is c what is the disadvantage of using winged rubber dam retainer so uh so these these are you can see is these are the wings and uh, uh, there are no wings here that is why it is known as wingless rubber dam retainer uh, so the disadvantage of winged retainer is that the, these wings will uh, these wings will interfere with the placement of the matrix band matrix band retainer and wedges uh what is the purpose of these uh, wings so these wings they are designed to provide uh, retention and stability of the rubber dam so presence of a winged rubber dam retainer it can obstruct the placement of the matrix band the placement of the pin it should be well the placement of pin it should be parallel to the external surface it should be suppose this one is the external surface the placement should be parallel uh, to the nearest external surface so that that helps to provide a proper retention and stability which of following it is not true about the lubricant for the rubber dam placement uh vaseline is an ideal choice already discussed before but vaseline should not be used as it is oil based in modified class 3 cavity uh, the retention it is obtained mainly by acid etching so acid etching it is a fundamental step in adhesive dentistry and it helps to create uh, which type of retention micro mechanical retention the formula number uh, placed on the handle are in following sequence so width length and angle already discussed this question the melting force the melting force it is directed at suppose these are the walls the force it is directed at 45 degree uh, to the wall and it is then condensed at 90 degree so uh, the first force is at 45 degree so and then it is at 90 degree so answer is 45 degree to the volts new odontoblasts they are differentiated from the mesenchymal cells in 15 days after amalgam is polished the metal surface is flattened this layer it is will be layer so the polished layer or will be layer it's the answer which type of matrix it is used for mod type of restoration it's the toffel meyer matrix a simple question which of following is used for extensive class 2 preparation replacing two or more cusps so in that case automatrix is used so that would provide the flexibility and support
that would be needed for the complex restoration the light from the uh, from the uh, visible light curing unit it can cause it can cause a, a retinal damage so the light emitted from the light curing unit they can cause retinal damage if the eye protection is not done so the intense and focused light emitted during curing light it can be harmful to eyes particularly the sensitive area that is the retina so one should use appropriate eye protection to shield their eyes from high intensity light during the dental procedure the amalgam scrap should be stored in tightly sealed container and it should be covered by a uh, sulfide solution so so that is done to prevent the environmental contamination and facilitate a safe disposal which of following is most retentive type of pin that is used for restoring teeth uh, it's self threading so this type of post or pins they are designed to provide good retention within the tooth structure a modified form of chisel is angle former so angle former it is a modified form of chisel so in this the primary cutting edge it is sharpened at angle to the axis of blade the major factor that determines the efficiency of burr it's the spiral angle already discussed before it is a repeat question the retentive cove it is prepared on the the retentive cove it is prepared on the so both the retentive groove and cove they are used to enhance the retention form of the class 3 amalgam restorations they are made at the axial incisal point angle the class 3 prepared for direct gold restoration in mandibular anterior does not include so in the mandibular preparation of direct gold restoration the incisal wall they not extend to include all of the contact area since in the mandibular anterior teeth contact area it is in close approximately to the uh, incisal edge for a proximal box that is very wide retention for an amalgam restoration is attained by it is obtained by horizontal self threading pins the instrument exchange zone in four handed dentistry it is below the patient chin so all the instrument exchange between the operator and assistant should be occur in in exchange zone below the patient chin and few inches above the patient chest so suppose this one is the patient chest it should be done above the patient chest and below the patient chin for cutting hard and brittle material the rake angle should be negative already discussed this question uh previously uh, the explanation has been discussed previously the pulpal for deepening during cavity preparation it is a uh, resistance form so the primary in order to uh, features of tooth preparation that enhance the resistance form they are the box shape cavities inclusion of weakened tooth structure preservation of cusp and marginal ridges rounded internal angles so answer is b